do it then. I'm, I'm going to kick it off then. We're going to go straight into it. What's up, everybody? My name's Clayton Filipovich, and this is officially, as of like two seconds ago, Senior Drill Instructor Square Away Time Podcast. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, Yo, Blue's Clues? Give me some C- <laughs> yeah. We are the Kapoor Blue's Clues. We are the Kapoor Blue's Clues. I am joined by... <laughs> <laughs> Gus Light. And... John House. And... Isaac Ibarra. And... <laughs> so, oh, man. Whoa. I shouldn't have done it. I was like, this is a douchey movie. Like, I don't even know why I did it. <laughs> I just slurp. I'm joined by... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so I guess we came up with the name of the podcast now. It's Senior Drill Instructor Square Away Time. Until we find something more clever. And, and, yeah, until we care more. That's pretty <laughs> much it. Next week, it's going to be like, you know, our podcast <laughs> called Red Cups and Blue Cups. <laughs> our branding just sucks. We're the worst at this. Uh, so real quick, typically we start out, we kick it with what? Gus, oh, but uh, okay. I think I think today I'm going to take it in a know. different direction. Yeah, you know oh. how I do. <laughs> you know uh, hey, hey, because we got first. we got some good. Hey, I'm gonna let you finish, but first I'm gonna say my topic. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take it in a different direction today because I feel like we got a lot of good topics. So I'm gonna get mine out of the way real quick, real early, and mine is money management tips because hold I up. feel like yo hold I'm up. up. I'm gonna interrupt real quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got a I got a, I got a quick <laughs> intro. Uh-oh. No beat. Here we yo, go. We're going to drop some bars. See your drill instructor square. Hold on. Here we go. Boy, I'm going to start a money man finish. finish. I'm going to start rapping. I'm going <laughs> to finish. But Mike's plugged, in, Mike's plugged in and ready to catch fast with four dudes got to say on certain topics and facts. I'll keep this intro short not to waste time. Share and like to spread more than just this rhyme. Now we're ready to start rants like we've done in the past. But don't disclaim though because this is still a sick podcast. Uh. Yeah. Yo, thank you, Brother Isaac. Uh, <laughs> Brother Isaac. <laughs> this is a cold now. <laughs> hi, I'm Brother. Hi, I'm hi, uh, Brother, and thank you. Uh, so I have a couple of notes jotted down right now. So the, anyway, on my YouTube page, the money management video for the Marine Corps is like one of the most viewed videos I have. I mean, it's it's not the best, but it's up there. I think hashtag it has like, save that money. Hashtag save that money, though. And a lot of people, it's a good question when they're joining the Marine Corps. They're like... They either have financial problems, they want to know how much they're going to get paid, they want to know how much money they can save. And I feel like everybody sitting around the table here is, is pretty well off financially. I mean, No, I'm, I'm trillions in debt. <laughs> I'm actually 58 million in debt. Call me Kanye West. Wow, I was going to say, Call you know, Kanye you know, West. <laughs> being frugal with your money, like that doesn't mean you're cheap, it just means... Yeah, Rap Game got it all wrong. Yo, yeah. Rap, yo, rap <laughs> Game got it all wrong. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo got to save that money, dog. Yeah. So, I'm going to throw it over to John real quick. Now, John, you're married. Yeah. Do you have any kids? No. No kids. Two so, dogs, though. Two dogs. Well, okay. You've got <laughs> oh, okay. some fur babies. Those are kids. We're yeah. working with fur babies right now. So what can you tell me, being a Marine stationed in Okinawa? Iwakuni. Iwakuni. Oh. Being a Marine stationed in Iwakuni, married, what can you tell me about uh, like saving money, uh, your Marine Corps paycheck? How does that differ from other people's paychecks by chance? I'll throw it over to you. Uh, well, I, I can tell you right now that being in the Marine Corps... That the big difference between, let's just say, non-military people is I don't got to pay for housing or food. So when you talk about the amount of money that people in the military get paid, and they go, oh, I'm paid a lot. Well, I also don't really have anything to, like, buy that I need. So, like, I can just, if I feel like it, not spend a dime and straight up be comfortable. Um, and... When it comes to saving money, I will say I don't have a, a ton to say on that, just simply because I go to my wife and I go, I made this much, what should I do? <laughs> and then she goes, you will save all of that, or here is your here's your allowance. So thank you very much. <laughs> and then, yeah, because yeah. she's smarter than me, because I was one of those people that came into the Marine Corps like, I have so much debt. <laughs> really? Wait, that was actually you? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I was... I was ridiculously we'll go with unintelligent with credit cards oh no oh. tell me about that um i would want a party in college and i didn't have money but it was like yo i can get a credit card and this credit card company would give me literally a five thousand dollar credit limit which oh my they God. had no business giving me right. and <laughs> well, i had no intentions of repaying that so i just was just like we're throwing a huge ass party and then, um, so like, did you not know how credit cards worked? Or no, like? I did. I did. I was, just, <laughs> I was just, you know, 19 and really irresponsible. And then 
Wow. Then I got another credit card. And kind of so wait, that didn't restrict you from being able to join though? Like they weren't like, your recruiter wasn't like, no, you can't join. You're in like outstanding debt. Like there's no way. Or they were yeah. just like, yeah, come on board. Because yeah. I didn't know that. Because I've been, been under the impression all this time that if you're trying to join with a ton of debt, that that could actually prohibit you right. from enlisting. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, you got me, lucky. Did you mention it to your recruiter? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I, I would say that it probably... Depends. Like if you're like a hundred thousand dollars in debt, they might be like, "Yo, that's a lot of money." How much debt were you? If I, if you mind me asking you, how uh, much debt ballpark? Ballpark. I, I don't know. When you do, you want to include student loans? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, start including them. student loans, probably about twenty grand, maybe twenty five grand. Oh Did they God. give you any relief on your student loans when you joined the no. military? Dang, bro. Yeah. Are you still paying them off? Student loans, yes, but all that credit card nasty debt, the right. kind that like needed to just be gone, is right. gone. Right, is gone, okay. which must be a huge burden. Like, oh, my God, yeah. yeah. It's phenomenal to actually be in somewhat decentness yeah. right now. Of course, credit, bad marks in your credit actually take about seven years to go away. So right. I still got right. like three more. Well, that's not bad, though. I mean, you really turned it. So, in, so you look to join the Marine Corps particularly in to, to settle your debts, is that kind of like a way that you went about joining the Marines? Was that a, a, a well, motivation I mean, or what? I mean, I joined the Marine Corps just when you think about how irresponsible somebody is that would get a $5,000 credit limit credit card with no intentions of paying it off because they just didn't care. <laughs> right. That sort of irresponsibility isn't just isolated to red credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there were other factors to joining the Marine Corps, but... Um, that was one of them, was like, all right, steady paycheck, I'll fix myself, my idiocy. Um, but that lack of having a lot of outstanding bills, other than the former bills, um, was really made easy, made it easy to pay off those debts. Good. That's awesome. Because, like, I honestly, whoa, I had no idea. I would, I mean, how am I supposed to know you were ever in debt? But I never knew that about you. And that's pretty cool that you joined the Marine Corps and was able to like, settle your debts like that. I had no idea that you could even join the Marine Corps with that, that much, much debt. debt. <laughs> yeah, somebody messaged me about two days ago and they said, um, I'm $35,000 in debt. I look, I'm liquidating my assets right now. I'm selling off all my stuff. I'm going to go to boot camp. And I'm like, and my advice to him at the time, two days ago before I knew this, was try to settle your debt before you get in the Marine Corps because the last thing somebody wants to do is have you get to their duty station, your staff NCO, and then hear that this dude's got like, hundred thousand dollars worth of debt i mean it's i mean joining the military isn't going to make your debt just magically disappear but it is a good way to start paying it back and start getting that and, and when, it, when it comes to the debt thing it depends at what level you're at so i mean are you actively involved in getting that debt get rid of mm -hmm. at that point i would say your step and ceo doesn't really mind they're just mm -hmm. like hey everybody has a thing when they come in he's doing the responsible thing paying down his debts and by the way I paid off all my debts and I wasn't even uncomfortable in the Marine Corps. I still got to go out and have a good time. So good. Wow. that's what makes the Marine Corps awesome. But I don't. I think what the problem would be is if you go to your duty station and you've done jack squat right. with your debt. Right. And so now like they're going to court and trying to force you and getting forbearances and that actually has to go through your employer. So now they got to deal with crap because of you. Right. That's when it starts to become an issue. <laughs> yeah. uh, the only restrictions I know of concretely – in the Marine Corps and financial stuff is this like security clearances that yeah. can be an issue, right? Because then, and the reason <clears> why that, that is, outside, yeah. Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason why yeah, that is is because like if you join the Marine Corps and you're fifty thousand dollars in debt and you have a secret <clears throat> security clearance and somebody wa walks off the street and is like, "Yo, I'll give you fifty thousand dollars if you give this USB stick and put it in that computer," mm -hmm. like that makes you, that is like a liability. So that's the reason why John's saying that you can't just get a high level security clearance if you're in a lot of debt. Now I'm gonna throw it over to Isaac real quick. Isaac, do you do the TSP? I actually don't know the TSP, but my staff sergeant was really good with that. And one day um, I was I logged in cause I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, staff sergeant, can you like hook it up? And then he's like, click, 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 click. Um, you're good now. And I was like, all right, thanks. Wow, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know, I actually don't know it like, much about it, but I do know like it's just money that mul like multiplies yeah, it's over time. It's kind of compounding. So yeah. basically, what the TSP is is the thrift savings plan, and it's kind of like a retirement for Marines uh, or arm like you know soldiers, Navy, whatever. <clears throat> and they you'll put however much money into it up to a certain amount, and the Marine Corps will match it. The government will match that money. Mm -hmm. So when you turn sixty five years old, you can pull all that money out and 
throw dollar dollar bills at your women's in Florida. That's pretty much it. Uh, the TSP in the military is a pretty good deal. They'll match up to 3%. Um, I think, no, they match. Yeah, they match 3%, but you can't go above 3%. I think in the civilian sector, in the civilian, like if you're a government worker like I am, you can, they'll match up to, I think, 5%. No, they'll match up to 3% and then half of whatever else you do up to 5%. I know that sounds weird. So if I put in $100, which is like 3%, they would match $100. And then up two more percent, it'd be $50, $50. Sounds weird. But anyway, TSP basically means... Uh, you put a little bit of pay- your paycheck away each month, and you get your retirement. So, and it's money you don't see too, so you don't even feel like yeah, you don't know the difference. Yeah, yeah. So I highly recommend you guys do TSP. If you don't, uh, definitely see your admin shop when you become a marine, and be like, hey, admin guy, hook me up, yo. Uh, I wanted to touch real quick on small expenditures and how they add up quickly. I'm gonna throw it over to Mr. Gus Light. Uh, Gus, what can you tell me about like small payments and how they kind of compound? Well, when you take numbers and put them <laughs> together, they add up. Um, but yeah, definitely be smart with your money. Um, like, I remember like when I first got in, I was like, I was really like, st- like when I got out of boot camp, I was like, I don't know if I should buy like this game because like all my friends had Borderlands Two when I got out. Oh yeah. And I, I was like, I don't know if I should buy this, but you know what? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, like, I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna be crazy <laughs> and spend sixty bucks to hang out with you guys, and we'll play Borderlands. And then I did, and then I realized, I was like, whoa, it didn't get declined. That was 60 bucks I just threw out. Yeah. So eventually, I just started buying every little thing. Like, all, most of my, like, things that I bought were, like, under, like, $60. Mm-hmm. Which I would buy, like, video games and movies and stuff. Right. But I would buy a lot of them. And, like, it's, like if you buy, like, one $60 game, like, that's not a lot of money. But then you buy, like... Six of them in the course of <laughs> yeah, and an like Xbox two weeks. and a PlayStation and a computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, all right, and an Xbox. So that's good. <laughs> anyway, like it, when like all that stuff like adding it, it definitely adds up a lot quicker than like you would think. Right. <clears throat> and but luckily, like I have like one of those. I don't have a thrift shit savings plan, but I have like a, a easy start certificate from Navy Fed. Oh, those oh, are legit. legit too. Which those are yeah, legit. I have, like, like I didn't even know I had that. Like I, I set it up in boot camp, and then like. I'm checking my bank account, and it was money. Like, I could only put money into it. I couldn't take yeah, money out unless, right. I, unless I, like, call them for, like, a specific reason. <laughs> right. And, like, right now I have, like, $10,000 in there. Dude, and, like, that's sick. Yeah. Same. And then, like, oh my God. And then recently I've been on, because I've been, when I PCS'd, I had a lot of money saved up from when I was on ship because uh-huh. I wasn't buying anything. Right, right. So I had a bunch of money. So I get to the States, and I was like, I got a bunch of money. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want right now. So I bought <laughs> a huge TV, and, like, I bought all this new stuff. And then I had to keep buying new uniform items because right. all my stuff got sent to South Carolina instead of Virginia. Oh, no. And then like the ball was coming up and this and that was coming up. And oh I was like, God. well, great. Like all these uniform things, I don't have my uniform stuff up. So I have to buy new ones and uniform items, especially like dress blues. I had to buy an entire new set of dress blues. That's not cheap. No. That's so not like, cheap. That was like, that was like 500 bucks. Like they so like, give ah. you a uniform allowance, but it's not even enough to cover all that stuff if you're doing all new uniforms. When does that even, I don't even know when Yeah, I don't even know when to get, when I get that. Like, it, it's the day you, gra- you know, the day you went to boot camp, that day is technically your first day of service. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so you get a $600 bonus each day, uh, like annually on that day. And most people like, like if you're like me, I only, <laughs> screw that, I'm gonna squeeze myself into them dress blues. Yeah, yeah. And yep. spend that on the <laughs> Xbox. Yep. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I didn't even have a pair of dress blues to try to squeeze into. I had to, I literally did not own them at the time because oh, they were being, they were, they got to sent to South Carolina. You didn't want to play that game with your alphas? Yeah, right. No. Like, they, <laughs> I, it, it was the Commandant's ball, so like, oh, I should have yeah. played You didn't want to be that one guy at the yeah. Commandant's yeah. ball showing up and I was like, what's up? I could have, because like, I was like, when I went to the Commandant's ball, like, it was, like, I thought I was going to be really stingy, so, like, I was, like, I bought my... I could have worn a suit there, and, like, no one would have said right. anything to me. Right. I would have yeah. rolled up to a suit, sat down in my chair. And, and they wouldn't like, know the difference. They'd exactly. think they're a vet or something. Exactly. But, so, anyway, yeah, so, it'll, it'll as for small expenditures lining up, so, I had a bunch of big expend, like, expenses adding up, so I was pretty much living, like, paycheck to paycheck. Right. Like, I wasn't, like, in debt, but I was still, like, by the end of the month, by payday, I had, like, 50 bucks left. You had to budget or more, yeah, be more conscious. Yeah, but now I've started budgeting, and now <clears throat> I have absolutely no problem. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been, like, the past few weeks since, like, he's leaving, like, I've been having a lot more fun. Like, we've been yeah. going out, doing doing stupid stuff, right. um, eating out a lot more, but uh, I've saved a lot of money, and, like, I put, like, $700, I saved, like, 700 bucks last month. 
But you have Navy, so you have Navy Fed. Yeah. So I'm gonna go on the table. You have Navy Fed, Navy Fed, Navy Fed, and USA. And Navy Fed and USA. So when you go to basically <laughs> the last question, last topic for me is when you go to boot camp, they give you they give you a choice to pick banks, right? And they either, they either give you Navy Fed or Pacific Marine. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nobody picks Pacific Marine, and if you do, it dude, it is the worst. <laughs> like I know so many people that made the mistake of doing Pacific Marine, and I'm not endorsed by Navy Fed, and I don't <laughs> care about like, Pacific Marine, but like for real, they only have like three branches on the West Coast, and they have no branches on the right. East Coast. So if you need help, like you have to call it like in the morning, or else they're shut, they're closed down. Uh, if you want to pull out money from anywhere, I just heard like so many bad things. Like uh, even personally, my drill instructor was like, I can't tell you to do this. You're, you're gonna choose. You're gonna choose Navy Fed. You know so just let you guys know, Navy Fed is where it's at, and I've really genuinely enjoyed. Yeah, like I've them. like yes. I actually had like some like credit card fraud, uh-huh. and Ooh. like it was it was what they were doing is I don't know how they got a hold of it, but like they were doing a lot of small things, yeah. Yeah. and then like I was like, oh, so I just canceled my credit card, and then my mom was like, oh, but like they couldn't. Like if they subscribe to something, they that whatever they have that is taking this money can find your new credit card. So I was like, okay, I'll take care of this. Called Navy Fed. I was on ship at the time too, and I did this so I was like super stressed that I was gonna oh, like no. I had to like type this special number on the phone on ship <laughs> just to be able to call out. And so I did. And I did all that, and I ended up getting like three hundred bucks back. Wow! And, like, I went back for like a bunch. That's like, lucky. A few. I went back a few months, and like like the biggest expense that they. Like they had spent was under thirty dollars. Wow! But it was like thirty dollars here, nineteen dollars here, like five dollars here. So you I wouldn't got a notice bunch of them. Huh? I wouldn't notice them. Wow! And then I realized that I actually started ch- checking like the things, right? Like where it was <clears throat> the money was being taken from, and I was like, well, it's this was even charged in like Kansas or, or some some random right. state, but it was only it was like at a gas station for like five bucks. Right. You're making me want to check my bank account. Well, right no, now. you should. I check my bank yeah. account almost weekly, and if I see any kind mm-hmm. like. Happens all the time to people, and especially those like even a penny charge. Imagine if they do a penny charge to a thousand people. Like, dude, they're making bank right. and they're stealing from you. So definitely good to check your bank account. I also want to touch that Navy Fed is a credit union, not a bank. You know what I mean? So like, they have a lot of like nice insurance on your on your account. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. To wrap up my little story, uh-huh. like I was able to get like three hundred bucks back, and Navy Fed was super helpful. Well, there you go. Cool. So but, my, my wife actually, while I'm here, she's back in Japan was telling me that she found on her statement like fraudulent charges to finishline.com and she's not sportsy she doesn't (laughs) do that and she called up uh navy fed to like report it and they're like oh yeah we already sent your new credit card out in the mail yesterday we figured this thing out like we were like (laughs) and like to her at first she was like wow that's great customer service i didn't even have to call they just noticed that's not something i do and then she got mildly offended because she was like, what, they don't think that I drop at finish line and buy like, <laughs> like <laughs> no shoes? Like, I think I'm just some fatty, but. <laughs> like, hey, what's this fat ass doing at finish line? <laughs> like, they're just you like, gotta look into this right now. doesn't shop at finish line. She shops at Starbucks and Whole Foods. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, my goodness. So, anyway, that was a lot of financial talk. I apologize. Going Let's on talk about tangent after tangent. Cool. Let's talk about something cool. We got to throw it over to your boy. Guess <laughs> what? All right, let's talk about the Oscars. They're tonight, as and right now it's uh, the 28th of February. I'm going to go around the table. I'm going to read off the Best Picture nominations, and we're going to get some thoughts. Let's hear it. Like, I'm all about I'm, this. Let's go. All right. So for Best Picture, the nominations for 2016 are Spotlight, The Martian, The Big Shot, Big Short, The Room, Brooklyn, the Revenant, Mad Max Fury Road, and A Bridge of Spies. Mm. Has anyone seen any of those? Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of I've them. I've only seen like two of those. I've seen Mad Max Fury Road I and The Revenant. I think The Revenant's going to... I mean, okay, I, mean, I think The Revenant's going to take it, but I don't think they should. I don't think it's, it's going to win Best Picture. You don't think so? No, well, he said something else that I haven't seen. And I always... You said Spotlight, right? Yeah, I've, I've seen like most of those movies. And of them, the three that I thought were the best were Spotlight... Mad Max Fury Road, mm-hmm. and actually The Martian. Hmm. I haven't I've seen The Martian yet. Really the Martian is just a straight-up solid action drama comedy. 
Like yeah, it's got nice. all the elements that make a really great movie. I just read the book too. Phenomenal book. And Matt Damon. Oh, what a dreamboat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he's, he's nominated for best actor. We'll get to our next category. But me, me, my pick is uh, Fury Road, just because that movie's awesome. It's balls to the walls. So. Right. Well, I mean, when like, when when, it, when, a, when a critic says nonstop action, that movie is nonstop action. Yo, if, like, if, if Will Smith doesn't win, it's racist. <laughs> Yo, I'm just uh, saying. Right. Four, I, four white guys here. Be careful. <laughs> I get it though, because like in Mad Max Fury Road, you had a dude where it's another dude's face on a moving truck playing the guitar with flamethrowers out of the guitar. Like, I mean, I get it. That's that's dope. That's that, is, dope. <laughs> that is pretty dope. But Spotlight, I saw Spotlight. Spotlight's a movie that um, is about the. Scandal at the Boston Globe broke about the priest uh, molestation stuff, mm-hmm. and sounds pretty heavy. No, yeah. one, it is really heavy, but that also was very a subdued movie in that they don't like do gimmicky music, actiony type shots to try and play up the drama of the situation. Because as the director said at one point, um, paraphrasing here. You don't need to add extra drama to 90 molesters in your community. Yeah. So (laughs) it was like, that's just a fact that's pretty disturbing in itself. So they just kind of let it be what it is. And it made a phenomenal movie. Is that the one with Ruffalo? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Rachel McAdams. Oh. Wait, this is like. Dude. Side note though. Lee Schreiber. Rachel McAdams though. Oh my goodness, dude. 100% (laughs) like. She's my dream girl. Just saying. Say, say she's like, like, yeah, she's gone. <laughs> time out. Who, who's everybody's? Rachel McAdams. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that right uh, now. Well, By the way, she's like 45. Look, okay, okay, besides, because okay, okay. like, I could, I could Zoe, like go we, on. Oh, uh, Zoe Deschanel? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, you could say, oh, yeah. I would like, one day I'll be like, oh, yeah, this is totally Zoe Deschanel. She seems so cute and lovable. And then the other days I'm like, oh, Yo. Emma Watson, also cute and lovable. Oh, but let's let's do uh, top top dream girls of in the best actress category. All right, let's do it. I like that. All right, we have what that say? <laughs> we went from finances as Marines, like we're like uh, in the Marine Corps or you're done killing people, you're going to save your money. Now we're like, so who is the dream girl in the Oscars? Okay, best actress. We got Brie Larson in the room, mm. Charlotte uh, Ramping in uh, 45 years, man. Kate Blanchett and Carol, man. Uh, Ciceri Ronan, in Brooklyn and mm-hmm. Jennifer Lawrence in Joy. Yeah. Go yeah. Um, this is kind of a no brainer. Yep. Yeah. We all, we all vote in Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Whoa. I was actually. Out of like, my field. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. She's lovely. 100%. She, she is, and she seems very nice and genuine. I'm a big fan of her pictures. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. And let's go to, okay. <laughs> Dream boats in the best actor category. All uh, right, dudes here. All right. I'm comfortable with my sexuality. 100. I will totally say yep. that Michael Fassbender. He's a handsome is, fellow. He is, and he's a he terrific is. actor. Yeah. And we also okay. Let, let me just read off the people who are nominated for best actor. We have Eddie Redmayne, mm. who I don't even know who that is. I don't know. Yo, you. you know. He's the guy that won last year for playing Stephen Hawking. This year, he's playing the one of the first transgenders that got the gender reassignment surgery in The Danish Girl. Sounds like an adorable character. And <laughs> I'm just saying, he has the most upscale British accent in real life that you've ever heard. But he hides it? In I movies know. and stuff, yeah. But like in real life, that, when you hear him, like he's got the most upscale British accent ever. Like yeah, but British <laughs> actors definitely have a hand that out on weird, American actors. Yeah. Because they, they, British actors can fake American accents. But we can't but fake But we can't fake British accents. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I've ever played on like Xbox or PlayStation and had like a 13-year-old British kid try to impersonate an American. And he's like, oh, I'm my, oh, my American. Yeah, Nav caught in hot dogs. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and I'm just like, USA, USA. <laughs> Who won the Revolutionary dice. War, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> even, even the strike back from the Empire. He beats you back. <laughs> well, we, we, we shouldn't have won the War of 1812. What? Oh, oh history lesson. Hey, what year was the War of 1812? Um, 1836. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good yeah. No, yeah. we should not have won the War of 1812. <laughs> they kind of, like, royally fucked us up. And then, we, and then they were just like, all right, we out. And we they out. just Like, they just kind of bounced. And we were just like... <laughs> We won. <laughs> it's actually pretty pretty American. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's like if you got a bar fight and got knocked out, but when you woke up, you were still in the bar, and the guy left, and you're like, I guess I'm still here. <laughs> you know? Party on! Yeah, they straight up burned down Washington D.C. Wow. Yeah, 
All right, but Jeez. let's get back to the Oscars. Let's get, let's get it. All right, so we have Michael Redmayne, <laughs> Michael Fassbender, Brian Cranston, Matt Damon, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo, Ooh, that's, a tough, yeah. that's a Leo. tough. Leo, so I was, I was, he's no. fighting for the environment. Fassbender, <laughs> you guys, like. yeah, Fassbender might though. And yo, there'd be, and I think that they might not give it to Leo just so there's riots Dude, in the I streets. I know. I feel like it's only been like the past like three like two or three years that people have actually noticed they're like i feel like the internet was just there one day and they're like wait yeah leo's been nominated like six times and hasn't won anything you know what is great i'm making a bunch of memes about it yep yeah <laughs> and, like, and then now was... it's been and then now like a few dedicated people on the internet who actually like movies and like social media and stuff have been doing that and now the casual people are picking up on it right the casual people also like leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> even though i guarantee they didn't notice and now everyone's like leo should get an oscar <clears throat> like let's talk about the revenant who's seen the revenant me it's amazing. Uh, Bart, bits and well, bits mm. and pieces of it. Of the Revenant. Of it's the in Revenant. theaters. How did that? No, happen? I didn't go. I didn't. I didn't go see it in theaters. Oh. Oh. Okay. Anyway, drama. like they're like, oh, this is Leo's year, and I was watching it, and like what he was doing, and like I'm sure like the behind the scenes stuff, like apparently like it was the toughest movie he ever had to film because like he was like freezing and had to eat like bear guts and stuff, mm-hmm. but. I was like wondering, I was like, was that really like his best acting role? Because I'm really attached to his role in The Departed, mm-hmm. which I think he should have won best actor for. Because... Oh yeah, The Departed was wicked awesome. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was like straight out of like I don't, I don't even know Eddie Boston's line. But like <laughs> the departed God, I have a God. Yeah. I was gonna say that, but I feel like that's just offensive. khakis. <laughs> I'm actually not wearing khakis. Uh but uh you know, like, that's my favorite Leo movie and like he actually like had a lot of dialogue and like a lot of like scenes with variety there was like you know like his love scenes and stuff mm-hmm. and then like his like drama scenes mm-hmm. but like this one was all like just to him trying to survive and like it was an awesome movie but i was like it doesn't really show leo's like versatility yeah, in range. one movie yeah yeah, yeah yeah because like the departed mm-hmm. i thought was like one of like that's leo's like best it was movie. dope it, it was a good movie but i agree with you can i, can I just say something about boston Right, of course. <laughs> okay, because... get ready, Boston. We're about to offend you all. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I just, I just had this summer the most Boston experience I think anybody could have ever had because I was in Boston. <laughs> you got mugged. In you Fen- threw, you threw tea <laughs> in I was, the Boston Harbor. I was in Fenway, and I was seeing a concert in Fenway of the Dropkick Murphys, wow. who are a Boston-based Irish band. And the song they were playing was Shipping Up to Boston, which is wow. the theme song. In The Departed. In The Departed, <laughs> as well as the theme song to Sam Adams' Beer. Yep. While I drank a Sam Adams' Beer, and 30,000 Bostonians were singing, Shipping Up to Boston. Oh. And it was like literally the most Boston thing you could ever have. There were also fights and girls screaming in the background, but it was amazing. I don't know how you just didn't <laughs> explode on the spot. It's so much Boston. Like, I should have a Boston accent right now. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, just over It's wicked queer, kid. Yeah. <laughs> my wife should have got pregnant I should have just started saying wicked all the time oh god I feel like I'm gonna get revolted from all the Boston fans well, if there are Boston, any. yeah Boston's cool Big like Leone's from Boston yeah, a he buddy is. he's a he's a really hard he's a hardcore Boston Bostonian. Bostonian yeah wicked smart wicked smart what's next uh, alright um well, I mean, we could talk about Brian Cranston, Matt Damon, and Michael Fassbender. Yeah, we could because, do a podcast on that. Yeah, but. yeah, because uh, Brian Cranston, Breaking Bad, yep. spectacular. Dude, awesome. he definitely, he definitely should be Lex Luthor. Let's switch gears and talk about the Batman v Superman movie and how oh, messed up that already looks, and how the trailer pretty much gave away the entire movie. I'm, I feel like it did, but I'm still going to enjoy it. But and like every new trailer that comes out, like the first trailer is like, okay, yeah, they're just trying to like rip off Marvel, but they're gonna do a dark thing, bro, right? Because every superhero needs to be dark and brooding, whatever. Zack Snyder and Batman v <laughs> Superman, and then I'm watching all these trailers and I'm like, God, I really like Batman. <laughs> and, then, and then like each new trailer is just better and better, and each new trailer features Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, and every trailer, I hate Jesse Eisenberg yeah, as Lex no, Luthor. Yeah, no, that's a bad choice. Every like because well. Everyone was like, when they first announced Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, everyone was like, oh no, he's going to suck. And then everyone else was like, oh, remember when y'all said uh, Heath Ledger was going to suck as the Joker because he's a pretty boy, <clears> but <throat> he killed it? Yep. Maybe Jesse Eisenberg can do it. And then I was like, no, he can't because Jesse Eisenberg has as much charisma as like a match. Well, and actually, a match well, is more charismatic. I mean, we'll see. Jesse, if you're watching, bro, we're sorry. Jesse Eisenberg? <laughs> yeah. like, you, you are, I'm sorry, but you're typecast to your role 
in Zombieland. You know, let's just call and, him up and have a conversation about it. Right yeah, let's uh, have Jesse. Right now, like he's like, I'm not saying he's a bad actor or anything, but, but no, he, he's not like he's typecast. Like he's there with like Michael Sarah. He's like the evolution of Michael Sarah. But we're not even going to talk about how yeah. the trailer was like, dude. That's like the trailer. The first one anyway was like watching the trailer for The Sixth Sense and then finding out that spoiler alert: the dude dies. Like the dude's dead in the end the mm-hmm. whole time. Yeah, because it showed like Doomsday and then like. The entire yeah. movie is called Batman v Superman, and then like it already showed, like the trailer showed them teaming up. Yeah, I know. And then like, Damn. like I, mean, I said, it, it is called sad. Dawn of Justice. It's not like, but I mean, and I've read. Like, I I've, mean, let's be real here. I'm not even a comic book kid. <laughs> I did not grow up loving comic books. I sort of got. I tried to. I I haven't ever yeah, finished neither, a comic neither. book. I know what Dawn of Justice means. <laughs> like it says Dawn of Justice, and I go Batman, Superman, Justice, Justice League. <laughs> Dawn of the Justice League. I wonder what's going to happen at the end of Batman v Superman. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I hope they take it super left field and just like straight up Batman gets put in the wood chipper head first. And just, <laughs> like just like Fargo. Like yeah. It just gets real dark. We're like, oh, straight, oh. Just straight no. up Fargo on it. Which most people weren't even don't even know what we're talking about probably when about Fargo. I haven't, I haven't Fargo, audience. but like, I'm definitely... What? Oh my God. I, I'm going to talk about Batman v Superman because I know I, more about that than Fargo. Uh... But, like, I do kind of like what they're doing. Like, they're already having Batman as, like, an established person in this universe, like, which is really cool because, like, there's been so many Batman movies, and they have not touched on, like, they've touched on, like, his origin, which I'm really mad that this movie is featuring a Batman origin story because you can ask absolutely anyone on Earth what's Batman's origin story. They're going to be like, his parents got shot. Right. In an alley. Yeah. I don't have to see that again in a movie. Right. I really don't, but there's going to be a portion because they already cast people to play as. We've already seen that in a movie. That wasn't Dark Knight Rises that his parents like kind of no, that, some, sprinkles a backstory of. No, that was Batman Begins. Oh, Begins. Was the backstory, right, which right, is right, right. It, which is entirely backstory. Yeah, which yeah, it was the entire backstory. But like every Batman movie, I feel like I haven't seen like a lot of them, but I feel like every Batman movie has that. Yeah, like I was like, I, we know his parents are killed. Like we don't need to have a backstory. Like a lot of. Excuse me, like a lot of people who aren't even hardcore Batman fans know a lot about Batman because Batman is so popular. So even with even with other superheroes, like all this applies to pretty much all superheroes, especially Spider Man, because when they revamped the Amazing Spider Man, when they had what's his face Andrew Garfield play him instead of Tobey Maguire, I was like, oh maybe they're not gonna have a Spider Man thing because Spider Man's so popular and everyone knows he gets bit by a radioactive spider. But no, they had to show <laughs> they it, had it. <laughs> and, they, and they had to waste like forty minutes of the movie of him just being Peter Parker. Then he gets bitten. I was like, wow, you just wasted half that, the movie. That fall on movie was garbage, by the way. The second one? Yeah, yeah. I didn't it was like, like it. it was okay. Like I wouldn't say it's garbage. Like it entertained me. I didn't dig it. See, uh-huh. I've always liked the origin story though. I've always liked seeing different takes on the way that they became who they are and how they handled it. And then also the way that they explain the superpower to me is always a key indicator of if it's just going to be a straight up good movie. Like Iron Man, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? A lot of superhero movies between, let's say, early 90s to 2008 were just straight garbage. Like outside of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, the rest of the superhero movies were all garbage. They were all just trash. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, Iron, Iron Man, Man actually did kick off like the and Iron Man movie. kicked off this like brand new like the Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe, like the golden age <laughs> right, of, right. of superhero movies. We're like, oh, like it's the like Fantastic Four being shitty is the anomaly. Like mm-hmm. you're like your superhero movie. You're supposed to be good, which back then it was like your superhero movie. Oh my god, it's good. And <laughs> and I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that when they introduced Iron Man. They're like, here's this character based in real life. We're not going to sit there and act like he can fly to the moon or something. Mm -hmm. And then he builds this this robot machine suit of armor that, yeah, it's not real, but let's just say that you don't know enough science to say that (laughs) couldn't happen. And none of it's like in based in with a box of scraps. <laughs> yeah, like, like none of it's based in metaphysics. <laughs> like none of it's based in psychic magic. Like all of it is like this is science, and you can't say it isn't. Like, and we're just like, all right, cool. Yeah. And the American way, you know, that's why. Like it was good. That the Dark Knight, Batman Begins. I liked those because when I watched them, I was like, plausibly, I guess this could happen. So I didn't feel like, yeah, no, I feel, I feel the same way. But dudes still, can't like, fly. And um, <laughs> this is a page out of some comedian's book, but like I remember my straight up my dad is, is the type of person to watch a superhero movie like Superman and where he gets shot in the eye with a bullet in slow motion and it bounces off his eye. And he's like, 
Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, what the? Like, dad, come on, that's man. The, that's the point of Superman. Come on, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the theater. People are looking. <laughs> no, but like, definitely, and also, like, they kind of, st- they definitely stay true to like his character. And I, I read somewhere that like, they like had like a rough script of Iron Man, and then like Robert Downey Jr. was like straight up ad lib the entire script. Wow. Well, yeah, like, he's brilliant. Well, he's, he's yeah, dope. he is. Like, he's gotten like better looking with age, oh, which is like, so yeah, well, I it's mean, a totally better thing. But. Well, I mean, like, what era are we looking at photos of Robert Downey Jr.? Because if we're talking like 1999, 2000, <laughs> it can only go up. Yeah, of yeah. course it can only go say, up like, because I've, things weren't too good for him right yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, no. Which actually, that's why they cast him too, is because Tony Stark, the character that is Iron Man, that's like a has story. Like, has a similar story yeah. to him. Like he's like on the re-up, right? Know? Right. But yeah, and they also they also say sim- like. They put his origin story, which, like, if you read, like, the original Iron Man comic books, like, he goes to Vietnam, or no, he goes to Korea, like, during the Korean War and gets captured Mm -hmm. and makes an Iron Man suit and escapes. But this one, they put it in, like, modern times, Mm -hmm. where he's, like, in Afghanistan and he gets captured by, you know, terrorists or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he builds the Iron Man suit and escapes. So it's, like, the same origin story, but it's put in modern times, which we can relate to it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I thought uh, Iron Man is definitely, I have to to watch my eyes in Iron Man forever. Yeah. So that's why I like origin stories. There you go. <laughs> you know, like whenever they come out with a new superhero Marvel, like they're like, yo, Ant-Man. I'm like, tight. I get to see like a brand new guy. I get to see how he... I mean, that's the, that's, the, that's the thing, thing though. And, like, and learned it. That's why I don't like origin stories is because they do origin stories of like Spider-Man. Everyone knows Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. They do Batman, Superman. Everyone knows but Yeah, but Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is very different from Andrew oh, Garfield's Spider-Man. super different. You know? I like Toby so his take it's, is so mm-hmm. different. It's just not that. Like if you made that Spider Man have all the same powers, but you called him Grasshopper Man and gave, put him in a green suit, <laughs> then you cool. would be like, "Cool, I wonder what happens to him." And mm-hmm. all of the same stuff could have happened. You'd have been like, "All right, cool, good movie." But because we <laughs> call him Spider Man, you're like, "Ah, I already knew that." And it's just like, yeah, yeah it but it it's off. a different character. Like, I don't know. Maybe they get squirrely, and you know, Ben doesn't die. I don't know, but he does. But <laughs> yeah, he, he apparently. <laughs> Like it's like with comic books, like char- like they kill off Superman, Superman comes back. They they've been saying Marvel's gonna kill off Wolverine. Obviously, Wolverine's gonna come back. As long as but, he keeps but, bringing in the bucks, bro, they're keeping him but around. Uncle Ben has been like the character that is always dead. Yeah. Any any reboot of Spider Man they do, like sometimes they kill off Aunt May, like later in the issues. But that's but, his like, inspiration. It's, it's that's, always it's Uncle contingent ben on him, though. <laughs> Which I think is just kind of funny. So Wait, the, the Wolverine thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been thinking about killing Wolverine off. There's actually a lot of talk that the reason why Marvel Comics is thinking about killing off a lot of X-Men characters that make money like Wolverine... It's because Hugh Jackman's is, an asshole? No, it's because they kidding? don't own the film rights. Fox does. Oh, yeah. Oh, and really? so Same with Fantastic they're getting Ford tired of that stuff, so they're trying to de-emphasize those ones that they don't own right. and maybe kill them off. And then just not do shit with them until yeah. Fox is like, yo, what are we going to do? We got no more stuff. Fine, we'll sell it back. And then they'll be like, boom, look at all these stories about Wolverine. Not a bad idea. Put Rest in peace, <laughs> headphone users. <laughs> no. I guess I want, we got to move this along real quick. We got time for one more. What's the next big oh, topic you want to hit up on oh, this whole? Oscars? Oscars. Um, best, best. I mean, we hit the best actor, best picture, best actress. You feeling one. it? You feeling yeah. good? Yeah. And you then we talk about the books, which like... I mean, I could do an entire podcast oh, by yeah, myself. Easily. I could <laughs> argue with myself about <laughs> comics. Just in the corner talking about comic books. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> Spider Man's cool. Man, shut up. <laughs> Spider Man is. Spider Man is garbage. Actually, no, I love Spider Man. Spider Man's dope. All I, mean, right. I can't. I can't really talk about any. Like I, I was saying, I don't like origin stories, but I like pretty much every superhero movie that comes out. <laughs> Literally, like, look, like Marvel made Ant Man. Like, who the hell knows anything about Ant Man? <laughs> and then I was like, I watched it. And I was like, that was really pretty cool. dope. <laughs> pretty dope. Ants can lift like a thousand times or weight or whatever. Yeah, and then like he had Anthony. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like what a pun. You know when Anthony, though? Oh, my God. Like, that was pretty. We won't do any spoilers. Spoiler alert. We won't do any spo- don't do any spoilers Anthony, for him. Anthony, like, yeah, he, oh, he's man. an ant, and he flies. And he's like, <laughs> Anthony, and it's so clever. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd's great. He's funny. He's a man. Yeah. I love him. And then, like, Mar- movie. Marvel movies, like, Marvel movies, like, have, like, some people, like, don't like him because they're, like, oh, it's all just, like, a little bit serious and then a joke. I'm like, but I, 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 I can watch any Marvel movie. And, like, I know it's going to be a good movie, and I'm going to be entertained by it. Nice. Like, I know, like, DC's kind of doing the opposite with, like, a super dark Batman v Superman, but I guarantee you Batman v Superman's going to be super serious. Mm-hmm. Little joke. Mm-hmm. Super serious again. Yeah. B- by the way, 
I mean, are we really that concerned about spoilers for a movie that's been out for a year and a no, half? No, that's very <laughs> I mean, true. There's, there's okay, got to be some dies. point in time. Like, if you no, haven't seen on, man. Ant-Man yet, like, and you're like, man, I was planning on seeing that this weekend. Like, <laughs> what if they were? That like, one come guy. on. What are the odds? Uh, and if that is you. Yeah, if you were so stoked for, to see Ant-Man, you should have seen it in theaters. Sorry, Felicia. Uh, so we've covered finances so far. We, we've gone through a uh, ton of Oscar talk. Uh, which, by the way, by the time this is aired, it's probably already happened, and our predictions may have been way off. I mean, we just kind of talked about how handsome Leonardo is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Right. we didn't right. give a single prediction. <laughs> <laughs> All, the only prediction was I was like Spotlight Schwinn movie. Right. Other than that, we were just like, I like Leo. Yeah, we know, we know Leo. Leo. I, like, I, like, I, like, I like how we talked more about the male actors than like, we're like we went to best actresses. Who, who's the best female actress? We're like Jennifer Lawrence, and then we're like, like, like uh-huh. a huge debate <laughs> when we're like, who's the best actor? And we're like, oh, like Michael Fassbender's dreamy. Like. <laughs> so we've covered our, our, our love fest of, of our male Man actor love. friends and even touched on comic books and Marvel and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to throw it over to your boy Isaac A.C. Ibarra. We're going to talk about yeah. fitness. Yep, we're here to talk about sex, weights, protein shakes. Oh. And uh, <laughs> pretty much bring gains to the table. And it's just, I thought about it today because I've been training with Gus lately. And tell him, Gus, how much weight have you lost within a span of like what? Two like, months? Two, like two months, I lost yeah. like 30 pounds. 30 pounds. Two months. And literally, yeah. we haven't even been eating clean for these two months. Yeah, I'd be Kylo shredded. If yeah, I was <laughs> I'd be Kylo shredded. So, wait, okay, so you've been, you haven't been eating clean? So, so wait, yeah. hold on, wait, so what is your guys' routine? So tell me, like, what is, what has changed? So, we wake up in the morning, sometimes we don't even eat breakfast, and sometimes we Ooh. do. <laughs> Most of the day, we eat renegades. Like, are, we, are, we, are we talking weekends? Weekends we don't eat breakfast because we sleep past Of course, lunch. yeah. We don't even eat corn pops. So like, <laughs> da- daily, like on a school day? School day, we usually get breakfast. We it's some, only been yeah. like this week where like we've just been having trouble sleeping, yeah. so we and just sleep in more. we'll eat like a protein, a carb, maybe a vegetable, and then we'll... You should get some fruits in there. Yeah, some Let's fruits. Fruit. And then after school, or during lunch... We eat, like chicken, rice, and vegetables. Because that's what they serve. Because that's what the they serve at the show hall. Sure. sure. Yeah. Chicken, and then next day, more and chicken. then we'll go to the gym. We'll train pretty pretty hard, and then we'll at night we'll like order something disgusting like pizza or oh, which yeah. we, we've only been doing that like the past like few weeks because right. yeah like we did it once we've been eating pizza for the past few weeks <laughs> we're just that's a lot of weight. pizza we're just losing weight left and right like no you're lactose intolerant you're just pooping it all out so. <laughs> uh so basically uh, i mean overall but what you're saying is you've changed uh your eating I habits changed. to a degree a now you've been using <laughs> they've been eating chow hall food and for those of you that are stuck completely to eating chow hall food what we're saying is it's not impossible for you to lose weight or gain muscle you just have to you just have to pick and eat in moderation so it's like you could eat that cake and you could eat those cookies or you could get the chicken and some vegetables and you know control yourself a little bit yeah it's all about moderation yeah i feel like at the chow hall pretty much they go yo i got two options for you this mad sort of good food or this kind of boring food that you don't want. Right. And then they go, but the boring food ain't that bad for you. And this sort of good food, it's pretty bad for you. <laughs> but, but like every day you're like, fuck man, I'll get the I'll get the sort of good food. I mean, I don't want to eat that boring <laughs> right. garbage rice and chicken. But if you eat the rice yeah, and chicken, like even like the food that like when they have fried chicken, you're like, whoa, fried chicken, it's shitty. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got like fried chicken, baked chicken, and you're like I'm gonna get that fried chicken because it's better. No, don't get the fried chicken because it's better because it's not better. It's yeah. just as bad yeah. as the freaking baked chicken. Just make like better choices. And I mean, like the hard part for me anyway. I mean, as you guys know, a lot of people know that watch my YouTube is that I lost 80 pounds to join the Marine Corps, and a lot of that came by just like thank you, thank you, give That's it up for me. Yeah, there's a lot of weight to lose. And, like, the way my friend, like, equated it was, like, imagine 100 one-pound cheeseburgers all over you. Like, that's what you had to shed. I was like, yeah, it's really weird to think about all those cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah. really, like, I don't know why that really put it in perspective analogy. for me. But, uh, it, like, really, like, a lot of people are like, how do you find motivation? Or how do you, like, how are you so dedicated? It's like, I just don't surround myself uh, with bad food in my house. Like, I try not to. Uh, as I have like fried food sitting behind me. I was gonna me. call you out, but then you called yourself. <laughs> but no, out, it's so. cool. Like honestly, like, everything in moderation is good. And you don't have to go like balls to the wall healthy or anything like that. Like these pretzels. 
<laughs> As you can hear, we got some nice crunchy, crunchy pretzels over here. <laughs> so, like, uh, in the chow hall, you mostly have a buffet style like setup, right? Uh, just make it a point to yourself to only fill up one plate and then don't go back for seconds, right? Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people give up really quick because they don't see results immediately. Right. And that's not going to happen. It's, I mean, results, it's literally going to come through consistency. And mm -hmm. if that's anything that we've learned is that, well, I mean, we've been going to the gym every day. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're staying consistent with the gym and not being like completely crappy with your food and going over your calories by a whole ton, you're going to be fine. But if you stop going to the gym and then you're like, I'll eat that here and then I'll eat that there, like that's just, it's not going to cut it for you. Right. And uh, so something that like I, I, I tell a lot of people I read this one I read this one book called uh, The Power of Habit, and I really enjoyed this book uh, because it kind of like tells you like how do I establish good habits right, and uh, the one big thing that The Power of Habit taught me is that if you do something for ninety whole days, you are going to establish a reoccurring habit, and that can be like seen in boot camp when you wake up at 4 a.m. every day for three months, you're going to be in that habit until you break it. Like, that, that you're going to wake up at 4 a.m. Yo, I broke that real quick. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, Dude, I was I like, I went home, I woke up, I went home, I woke up at 4. Like, that second day, I was like, why am I up at 4? And I went right back to bed. Really? And then, I like, every day I'd wake up for, like, a week or two at 4 a.m. and go, nah, and go back to sleep. Dude, for me, I was, like, a straight-up motard. Like, I would get up <laughs> for months, bro. I would get up. At the crack of dawn, at like 4.30 in the morning, I would fold my clothes, get my stuff ready for the day, go out, exercise, run, do all that good stuff. And like eventually I phased out of that because I became a real person again. <laughs> but uh, the one thing that the power of habit taught me is like, yeah, just eating healthy and, and, and exercising and doing it even on the days you don't want to. Like it's good for you and it will pay off. So I actually gained weight in boot camp. I gained really? Like, yeah, I gained like four pounds because I weighed like 120 before the Marine Corps because huh. I didn't work out at all. Right. All I would do is just skate. Right. And, uh, <laughs> Probably so, skate. Yeah, so literally I was like a scrawny 120 little kid and then I started like with the pulley program starting like at four pull-ups. Right. And I was weak and skinny and then I was like, all right, I got to change. Like I need to get swole. Right. So I literally started weightlifting and... <clears throat> Yeah, and I went to boot camp. I got from 120 to 140. Went to boot camp, came out like at 144, 145. And at that point I was doing like about 20 pull-ups. Cool. If you're any crunching right now, Gus is <laughs> eating pretzels into his mic. Um, the one last thing I want to touch on is, oh man, what was it? Oh crap, I'm about to have a brain fart. Uh, testicles. Te yes, <laughs> testicles. So the one big thing about losing weight is just suck all the juice out of your testicles. You lose 16 pounds right away. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, dang. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's for poolies trying to lose weight. Uh, a lot of people have this problem is they're like, man, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to be good. But my parents keep buying crappy food. I keep having to eat dinner with them. And it's just like they they eat horribly. And I was the same way. I came I came from a uh, backwoods Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania family that loved to have carbs, chocolate, chocolate cake at night, like, Non-stop bad food. Mm, that is great. Yeah. There you go. See, I didn't have the problem. My family was like all organic. Really? Like everything was organic. See, we're just I mean, blessed with like, like a family that's like, all right, we know that we're not going to kill ourselves through chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm sorry, mom. I'm calling you out right now. Like the only way I got rid of that was at I think 16 or 17 years old, I got a job. I started paying for my own food and I would go out of my way. Yeah, to uh, to like go and buy you know healthy vegetables, cook my own food, cook my own whatever, and it offended my parents when I didn't eat with them like for dinner. But <laughs> like, oh, yeah, my mom would be like genuinely offended. She's like, "You, why do you hate the family?" And I'm like, "Ma, I don't hate the family." <laughs> you turn your back on the family. You turn your back on the family. You're done. <laughs> and I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm not like trying to offend you, but like I have times I want to eat. I have portion sizes I want to eat. Like it's not a reflection of." You guys, it's just I don't want to eat 14 mashed potatoes, 12 steaks, five hamburgers, and 25 tasty cakes. You know what I mean? What kind of foods would you buy? I would buy like chicken, steak. I would buy quinoa, brown rice. Uh, for the vegetable aisle, like I'm very particular. I would eat like only tomatoes, sweet potatoes, 
uh, broccoli, I'd have to cook it, and a lot of egg whites, and I would stay away from bread, and I would stay away from anything packaged. Anything, like, I would basically, sh like, shop the perimeters of the grocery store. Right. So you're pretty much only hitting vegetables, meat, produce, all that good it's stuff. It's pretty easy, dairy. honestly. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's easy once you get that habit right. established. Right, yeah. So, for any of you guys, especially anybody watching that's under the age of 18 right now, or, or currently lives with their parents, whatever age you might be, uh, have an honest, open discussion with your family and be like, listen, I want to lose weight. The only way I can get to where I want to be in life and with my goals is if you guys help me. And if they don't, they aren't on board, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Isaac's oh, like, yo, you're yeah. fat. Uh, if you want, if you want to get on, if they don't get on board, it's going to be harder, but it's not impossible because my family absolutely did Spit not some get rhymes on board. At them. It's like. This is my life. I gotta live it how I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was awful. That was pretty awful. <laughs> I will say this to people out there that are trying to lose weight. First of all, it's all about calories. And second of all, um, don't don't delude yourself. If I've seen many people do as they try to lose weight, that just because the word salad is in your food means that it's healthy. Right. Like, oh, for instance, God, if yes. you drench it in ranch dressing and cheese and croutons, guess what? It's not healthy anymore. It's now really bad for you. Right. So, it like, even when you get those healthy things, it matters how you cooked it, what's in it. Just because the overall food, like, salads in general are healthy, but it depends, I guess, on what you put in the salad. If you, if you have, like, a fat-free Italian dressing... You know, mixed green spinach salad. Yeah, that's good for you. But if, as soon as you start doing hardcore in the dressing, hardcore in the cheese and the croutons and the crap, yep. it's not healthy for you anymore. The bacon bits, which makes it delicious, I know, but... Causes cancer, apparently, according to a new study. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bacon wow. does not cause that's cancer. That's what they say, man. Bacon that's what they up. say. Yeah, you <laughs> your cancer up. of sadness, I don't know, but, like, it's pretty enlightening. Like, yeah, no, hey, it's good. Good foods are tasty and they're good in moderation. It's a like, war on meat. It's a war on meat, I mean, you can meat, eat well. good and be healthy, too. Like, you can. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. that's... Right now, like, we've been eating pretty bad. Like, yeah. You don't have to be super strict on yourself, but give yourself, like... Yeah, get, the, get the habit. Have the... The anomaly be the fast food. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's just, actually healthy to have like a cheat meal every once in a while because your body right. is um, not used to having that, so you kind of shock it, and then when you eat like all those sugars and stuff, it's like, oh, nice, and then like your metabolism just spikes. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying eat a cheat meal like every weekend, but once a month or something like that. Yeah, you should definitely like rub down. Has he eats pretzels? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like John was saying, like pay attention to your labels. Don't just listen to the front of the package. Like if something says. Uh, low, like, like sugar let's say sugar-free, bro. Yeah, that that's how they just lied, bro. Or fat-free. Because you know what they do in sugar-free? They may take away the sugar, like the actual, like, no-crap sugar, but they'll add 200% aspartame to it. Mm -hmm. Like Diet Coke, for example. They'll say sugar-free. Bro, you take a look on the, at the, on the other side of the can, and it'll be, like, 195 milligrams of aspartame, which is 200 times more addictive than sugar. <laughs> yeah. No crap they're putting aspartame in there. They want you to come back as a repeat customer. Right. And what I see a lot is fat free, but the sugar is like insane. Yeah, that'll happen. So even and it's well, it's still gotta taste good. <laughs> <laughs> but like protein bars are a huge, huge problem. Like they people are. just think like, yo, I'm gonna get ripped, bro. I got protein bar, I hope. And I'm like, listen, man, look at the nutrition label. Yeah, look at the carbs. Look at the serving size. Yeah. If you have a if you have a bar there's like a huge honking bar, it might say 150 calories. But it will say three serving sizes. So multiply mm -hmm. 150 by three, bro. That's what you're that's eating a lot, right there. Yep. That's that's yeah. It's a lot. Another thing. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna do that, man. Yo, if you want to lose weight, I'm gonna tell you right now. Just stop drinking soda. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god. Just stop. Yeah. Water. No soda. No no energy drinks. Like I I got up to 210 when I was in Iwakuni because yeah. like I wasn't Jeez, paying bro. attention. I can't even imagine that on you right yeah, now. Yeah, and so I had I pretty much I had an MC1 that was like a petty officer first class was like yo. Bro, you got fat. You need to fix this. And I was like, I looked in the mirror. I was like, shit, I'm fat. <laughs> um, and so, so I, um, yeah, I just stopped drinking soda. I just stopped having energy drinks. I just, you know, like they were just done. Yeah. And that lack of sugar, well, it sucks. Like, I like, you go through withdrawals. You yeah. like, I've I've stopped drinking and, and eating sugar, and I've been 
shaking at night. That is, shaking. That's crazy. If people I don't realize, that's why I couldn't sleep. That's probably why, because people don't realize that sugar is addictive. It is physically yes. addicting to yes. your body. Your yeah. body gets addicted to three things, and it's salt, sugar, and fat, because you're, that's what your body craves naturally but if you get too much of it it's going to want more of it yep. so when you go through like a, a phase where you just completely cut that off for your diet that's not good for you at all and what does, that's what a lot of people try and do is they're like their habits of eating are completely horrible and then one day they're just like yep i'm going to completely change over my life like your body is not going to reply respond in a positive way when you do that yeah. and people don't realize <laughs> we're literally 78 percent water at least and if you're not drinking if you're drinking more soda than water I mean, yo, there's something wrong, you know? Oh, big time. Mm -hmm. And like you said right there, like just storing, like your body will store fat. If you cut it off cold turkey, your body is going to want to store fat. Faster. Faster. Yeah. So you actually might be cutting out sugars and stuff yep. and gain weight. Mm -hmm. And gain weight. Or maybe you have some short-term success. Maybe you say for two months, you cut all that stuff out, you're feeling good, you're feeling great. And then one day, bro, you just gained 10, 10 pounds out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's because your body is responding to what you've done. You've done to it essentially is like straight up like cold turkey it, and now it's responding to that. So that's a really good point that Isaac brought up right there. There's a ton of stuff. We can make an entire podcast about uh, nutrition and stuff like that, and maybe we will. If you guys want it, I get that question a whole bunch. I think one thing they should like start, I think like a cool quick tip for me, I carry a Nalgene bottle with me everywhere I go, and go. I want to give it a shout out because it is literally my best friend. What's it's it? Wait, wait, it's Nalgene. It's N A L G E N E. That's Nalgene. the brand. That's the brand. That's the brand. They said it's a big old sponsor. Water sponsor. <laughs> thirty. It carries thirty-two ounces. If you drink four of these, it is one gallon a day, which is optimal. And of course, if you're sweating more, drink a little bit more. But I at least try to drink four of these a day, and I'm ripped. Six pack. Yo, and pack. I'm ripped. <laughs> Yo, we came and filled the doorway. I saw him take his shirt off in the shower and he had an eight pack. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six pack. Like Isaac like Abaro was shredded. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, man. So I feel like we covered a lot. We answered a lot of uh, hot, hot we're button like, topics. We're going to start real helpful on money. <laughs> then we're going to go off the rails and just talk about Dreamboat Boys. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then we're going to go back into being helpful again. There you no, go. you forget the part where... And Dreamboats, yeah. The Dreamboats well, were my favorite part. And then we talk about superheroes, which is not helpful. Well, that's true. I, we probably lost like 50% of our people on superheroes. People are like, don't oh, give a shit about what you think about the Iron Man movie <laughs> versus Dawn of Justice. Oh, my God. Oh, man. So, Isaac, yo, you going to give us some bars out of oh, here or man. what, bro? Here we go. All right. So, I came up with an outro as well. Here we go. Guys, this might be <laughs> Isaac's last podcast. I want you to know he's heading back to Iwakuni, Iwakuni Japan. Okinawa, o Japan. Okinawa, yeah. Got to get them mixed up. He's heading back to Okinawa, Japan. Uh, so, he's going to give us some bars to play us out. All right. Here we go. Now, we got an outro. Another way to say goodbye before we actually go. Thanks for the listen, guys or gals. Doesn't really matter because you're all good pals. Don't forget to like and share and follow. Stop again and again because we might have something new tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. It's your boys from the podcast, Senior Drill Instructor Square Away Time. How about, how about it's like Clayton Square Away Time? No, I don't want Clayton Square Away Time. I don't want to be the lead in this thing. You are the lead in this thing. This is all your equipment. This is your house. <laughs> <laughs> You're in every episode. <laughs> Literally, I, I want to do my own podcast, and I brought it up to you, and you're like, oh, I just bought all the equipment. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do a podcast with you. <laughs> I don't know. So name to be determined. How about Clayton, Senior Drill Instructor, Square Away Time? Okay. I can see you, yes, I